Thank you. Our Winter Tryst by Kim French. I've always wanted a winter date, you say. You turn to catch me looking at you. A winter date? To stave off the winter blues, you say. Sounds great. Let's try it, I say. Five days of every year from January the 15th to the 20th. It's not my place to question. Where did we go first? The big house at the crooked boot. The crooked house at the big boot. <laughs> Prague. Prague. The house is full of his old furniture. He fortifies us with plum brandy and sends us out into the snow to eat sparrow at a local restaurant. Only a country so cold in winter would serve a dish so rich and a fire water so potent. On Charles's bridge, you stand transfixed by the man with white stubble, wearing knitted fingerless gloves, who slips his fingers into a small metal box of heated water, then moves them fluidly over the rims of crystal wine glasses filled to various levels and arranged by pitch. Fur Elise resonates in the cold air. You breathe out as I breathe in. It is minus one. In the marionette museum you say, I could clone you. <laughs> Marionettes Inc. It's been done before. Everything's been done before. Everything. Budapest. Peggy and Beckett spent four days in bed. And what did they do for sustenance, I ask? Stimulating conversation and room service. <laughs> it's not my place to argue. On the fifth day, we pass a violinist playing Mozart on Sicheni Bridge. It's minus two. You follow a sign that says live music and we descend stone steps into a family living room where they are as surprised to see us as we are them. <laughs> they serve us their dinner, call their friends, send their son to fetch the violinist from the bridge who serenades us in the warm apartment as we eat chicken nuggets and peas. <laughs> their friends arrive with a bottle of wine and convince us without a word of English that we are the most beautiful couple uh, and this is the most perfect evening until we're happy to part with 25 euros for a CD that doesn't work. <laughs> then we go to Sicheni Baths. Steam rises against the indigo air. A woman wears a pink shower cap with feathers. Old men play chess. Marble lions spout fountains, volcanic, as we tumble from hot to hotter to less hot to natural jacuzzi effervescent. We fall into bed, lovers at the Art Hotel, where others come to do business, and we are smiled at conspiratorially, whispered about, envied, and off-season. <laughs> We've never spent a Christmas together, so you won't have to meet my disastrous but beautiful family. We have only our winter dates, which I get to choose and book. Then I forward the details to you. It is you who set the rules. Copenhagen. On the fifth day, we attend an open mic poetry gig in Danish. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking we're going to a jazz gig, we arrive early, ascend a long flight of steps, sit on the plastic chairs at the centre near the front. The room fills up quickly. Some of it is clearly very humorous because to the left and the right, front and back, there are waves of laughter. I'm ready to make for the door, but you don't move. You listen to the rise and fall of syllables. What if someone finds out? We don't speak Danish. <laughs> so what's the worst can happen? They kick us out. Afterwards, you ask the man in the jazz shop to recommend something. The room fills with music. He speaks perfect English. Everyone in Denmark speaks perfect English. It snows. Next year, 
we're going somewhere hot. <laughs> Luang Prabang. Even getting here takes monumental effort. Visas, passports, border control, American dollars, more American dollars. But this heritage town is a joy. All temples and monuments and no cars. It's peaceful and it's hot. When the saffron-robed monks pass by at 5 a.m., you're ready for them. Having given every last cent we have to the canny women who sell rice balls wrapped in leaves at extortionate prices to guileless tourists like us, we give all our food to these well-fed monks with their bells and their ceremony, and we eat nothing ourselves for breakfast until the bank opens at 10, by which time we've been going round and round the food market for five hours in circles of deteriorating temper, just like we did in that kayak we rented yesterday. <laughs> it is a long wait for that cup of thick coffee with condensed milk, and low blood sugar suits neither of us well. <laughs> I crave our bed on these long, hot days, but we visit temples from dawn till dusk, then take a night bus to Vientiane. A man with a gun sits on the roof while crates are unloaded in the middle of the night. We eco-trek. Leeches grow fat on our blood. London. <laughs> I need you. You need me. I hesitate, phone in hand. It is June and it is 3 a.m. You don't know about my child. You never asked. Just as my wife <laughs> has never asked about our winter conferences. <laughs> Next year. I've booked for St. Petersburg, I whisper, and disconnect. <laughs>